Ladies and gentlemen, please pray silence for the father of the bride. Right, you're wrong. Um, where do I start? <laughs> yeah. Okay then. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family. Right. Well, I've got to move this close to me. Right. Apparently, I'm the first on the warm up. With the warm up, act, you might say. <laughs> it can only get better from here on. So I'd like to start by toasting the, br toasting the bride and groom on behalf of me and Val to be the first ones to formally co comment on how beautiful my daughter looks and her husband. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> Do you all drink a toast? Do you all drink a toast? No. Well, we'll have another. <laughs> I would also like to thank Gino and Anna for helping make this special day possible. All right, I've lost my way. <laughs> when I say helping, I don't mean, I don't mean by having it, <laughs> but I do mean by helping with the finance, without which I would be bankrupt. <laughs> also, I would like to thank Sarah and Ed for their input as well. Though when I first met, met Ed, I'm afraid he suffered from a syndrome. Are you ready? Known as short arms and big pockets. It's still there. It seems to be coming out of it though. In fact, I think I owe him a pint or two. Michael, oh, just a tennis. minute, just a minute. The amount of beer he's had out of my fridge. <laughs> he don't, I don't owe him Luckily, he doesn't like whiskey. <laughs> I would like to thank you all for making the effort and coming here today. And looking among you, some of you have really put in an effort. Some of my friends, I can hardly recognise them. <laughs> Next page. There's only about ten of these, by the way. <laughs> it's big writing. Yeah, mine's a size 14 font as well, now. Yeah. Earlier today, I was moving among the many of groups of people and they had snippets of conversation. One group I heard was saying, Who are they over there? And some group replied, They're from Ed's side of the family. They're from Sicily. <laughs> a few seconds later, I had, well, I nearly had a heart attack when I saw some suitcases at the side. Until the wife pointed out, don't worry, it's only the spring quartet. <laughs> and at this point, <laughs> at this point, I would like to ask Juno to stand up and say a big thank you to his family who have made it to this venue today from Sicily. Yeah. Do you want the mic, Juno? Yeah, yes. that's you. Don't talk it though, will you? <laughs> so, thank you from the family in Italy. Uh, on behalf of Mom. Uh, I just want to say... In Italian. Italian. In Italian? I, I could have done that. Can you give me, praticamente, a la famiglia che è venuta direttamente dalla Sicilia? Mia sorella, mio nipote, mia nipotina e mio cognato Giovanni, grazie molte per essere venuti. I've never known you do such a small talk. <laughs> However, in all fairness, it's probably much easier in this day and age to get here from Sicily than it is from down in Hastings, where two of Sarah's cousins have made the journey. Um, you know, battling the M25 and all that. I say Hastings, but in fact, it's St. Mary's on Sea, the posh end. <laughs> We all know the Battle of Hastings, 1066, a date that sticks in all our minds. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Somebody's been to this out, wrong. She's 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very good. Oh, yeah. And my brother John's family, who lived there, who unfortunately can't be with us today. But thanks to Anna and Janine for making the journey. Thank you. Another date I remember well is 1984. The year the Challenger blasted off. Ghostbusters were on. Ghostbusters were on the cinema. Yeah. What else was on? Scarface. Great film. Great film. Yeah. Great film. Oh, and of course, the year my Sarah was born. On the 4th of January, 1984. So anything that happened after that was insignificant. This makes her a Capricorn. Same as me. I have two brothers. She has two brothers. Looking at us side by side today, I think you'll agree that that is where the similarity ends. <laughs> But when she was much younger, she was always in t-shirts and jeans and a bit of a tomboy. So you'd actually think that I had three boys in them days. <laughs> I could tell you many tales about Sarah, but it would take far too long. <laughs> One I will tell you, on her fifth birthday, <laughs> I was asked to leave this one out, by the way. <laughs> Given a game by some friends of ours. Now, this game, was in, it involved a ball bearing, which was designed for kids much older than five years old. After a while, she came to me and she said, that ball hurt me. When it went down, went down there, said I. Down my throat. <laughs> oh, dear. Whereupon I was left with the two boys and Val dashed off to a &E. <laughs> On getting to on getting to AE, &E, I better have the mic closed in. Uh, Val was asked, did this ball have any sharp edges to it? To which Val replied, no, it was smooth. No, I can move the edges. <laughs> Yeah, build, build up to it now, build up to hey. it. <laughs> the doctor asked, was that where I was up to? How yes. big the ball was? To which Val replied, as big as you all know. <laughs> At this point, I would like to point out that the wife meant the small round knobs on his drawer. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, the nurses were in Stitches. <laughs> At four years old, she won a competition. It was a holiday princess competition, and she won us a three weeks holiday. Yeah, it was. It's good fun. Seeing her here today, I think you'll all agree, she's still a princess. <laughs> Although we have quite a few people here today, a few that were invited unfortunately couldn't make it. They had prior commitments. And there are many that would have been here today that wild horses would not have kept away. But unfortunately they are no longer with us. And at that point, I would like you all to raise your glasses to have some friends. Have some friends. At this point, You'll be glad to know, I'm going to sit down. Uh, as I can't wait any longer to hear my son in law speak. <laughs> Unlike this one that was written this morning, at four o'clock I might have sat on the edge of the bed making enough notes. Then my son come put it onto paper for me. I understand that Ed started writing it in January. <laughs> He's been practicing it ever since. <laughs> Adding to it, subtracting from it. I understand he's even stood in front of a video camera and practicing it. <laughs> so for that reason, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> so, I, so I'm going to sit down here now and say, take it away. Cheers, Norman. Yeah. Yeah.
gentlemen in response, please pay silence for your bridegroom. Wow. Great reception. Great reception. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, all. Um, I'm not particularly great at public speaking, so uh, as Henry VIII once said to uh, each of his wives, I shall not keep you long. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank uh, Norman for those kind words. I'm very pleased to be your son-in-law, Norman, and uh, I hope I can live up to your expectations. <laughs> I know they're very high. You've got to win the lottery to deal with that. <laughs> that reminds me, Norman. I've got that contract that you asked me to sign. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> asked me to sign a contract. Yeah, and it, it reads, received one daughter in perfect condition, fully guaranteed. Care notes, gets bored easily. So keep busy with a constant supply of jobs to do around the house. Now, not to be outdone, my mother has also written, um, has also got a contract for my wife to sign. <laughs> there you go, Dan. <coughs> it reads, received one son, sold as seen. <laughs> Hang on. No refunds under any circumstances, <laughs> so you're stuck with him. <laughs> Care notes, dehydrates easily, so top up regularly with beer. <laughs> Uh, now, whilst writing this, whilst writing this speech, um, I thought it'd be a good idea to research some events in history which happened on this very day. So I found out that in 1889, <laughs> King Mwanda of Buganda resigned his post in Africa, and in 1948, synthetic rubber was first used in concrete. I'm sure both of these events will be a real inspiration to us over the years. <coughs> right. Now for the first time, and probably the last, um, I'd like to now speak on behalf of my wife and I. Thank you. <clears throat> it's lovely to see so many of our family and friends here today to help us celebrate the happiest day of our lives. I know that some of you have travelled a long way to be here today, especially members of my family. Angelo, my auntie Amelia, my uncle Giovanni and uh, my uh, beautiful Federica. <laughs> We'd really like to thank everybody for making our day that extra special by, by being here today. So if you'd all like to raise your glasses. Here's to friends and family. Thank you. Cheers, Mum. Um, now, as we celebrate today, um, I just wanted to take a moment to remember those to remember those who are no longer with us. I've already done that. I know, but I'm doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd have told me what you if you'd have told me what you wrote, I would have taken it out. Your speech, you do what you want. <laughs> uh, we know in our hearts that they're looking down on us today. So if you could again all just raise your glasses. Here's to absent friends and family. Thank you. Um, I would personally like to thank Val and Norm for accepting me into their family and for giving me their blessing on marrying Sarah today. I would also like to thank you both on how well you have brought Sarah up into the beautiful, caring, kind and intelligent woman who I've had the pleasure of marrying today. Uh, now, as this speech is from both of us, Sarah would like to thank my mum and dad. So, in Sarah's own words, Anna and Gino, you should be very, um, I would just like to say that you should be very proud to have raised such a, an intelligent, dashing, handsome son who <coughs> is athletic, is, is wise. No. <laughs> I'm just reading what she wrote. Uh, and a very modest man. Uh, he's a great catch. Uh, and I'm very happy to have married him today. Thank you very much, darling. Yeah, That's lovely. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, I would, um, I would like to thank my, my mum and dad. Um, you both mean a, a great deal to me. I, um, I always remember my childhood being a, a happy one, and that was because we did everything together 
as a family. I'd like to, to thank my mum for helping me understand the key values in life. And I'd like to thank my dad for providing for his family, working his fingers to the bone at Marshall's for some 30, 35 years, getting up at four o'clock in the morning, for as long as I can remember. You've both helped me through my troubled times, and it's in those troubled times that you really realise who you can rely on in life, and I know that I can rely on the both of you. Thank you. Both sets of parents have made huge financial contributions that's really helped today, uh, helped make today possible. And we really thank you so much for that. Without your help, we really wouldn't be sat in this beautiful place today. So on behalf of myself and Sarah, we would like to uh, give both sets of parents these gifts, Sarah, as a token of our uh, love and appreciation. If you'd just like to bring the flowers out, mate. Cheers, Noel. Thank you. There you go, Val. What do you want? <laughs> Don't put them there. Oh, God. Nearly. That's my dad's. There you go, Dad. Oh, thank you, Edward. Thank you. All right, thank welcome. You thank you. There you go. Thank you. I've got a kiss. No, no, I'll give you a kiss now. <laughs> Saving thank you, fella. Thank you. I'll give you a kiss. Yeah. Are we done? Okay, um, that, needs, that leads me nicely onto my wife, Sarah. Um, first and foremost, Sarah, I can't begin to describe how absolutely beautiful you look today. And um, today makes me realise just how lucky I am. And I know it's definitely me who's getting the best deal. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I remember our first date back in uh, August 2010, I believe it was, in uh, Beebe's restaurant in Leeds. Uh, we agreed to meet at half past seven, but being Mr Punctual, I got there for about quarter past seven. <laughs> half seven came and went, and there was still no sign of Sarah. 7.45 came and went, and there was still no sign of Sarah. 15 minutes late. <laughs> I was beginning to think she'd stub me up, uh, however, around eight o'clock, she turned up looking stunning. I should have realised though from that moment that punctuality wasn't Sarah's strong point as we now seem to be late for everything. <laughs> I've learnt that if you want to get somewhere for 8 o'clock, tell her that you need to be there for 7 and you might actually have a chance of being on time. <laughs> She's not as bad as Mark though, I have to say. <laughs> Uh, the date was brilliant, uh, the conversation was flowing and we, we really seemed to get on very well right from the off. We, uh, we both want the same things in life, we're both very family orientated which was extremely important to me. Uh, Sarah has a, a huge passion for, for travelling the world <clears throat> and, and this passion has now passed on to me and I can't wait to experience the world, the different countries and cultures together. She's also taught me many things during the time we've been together. She's made me a better, calmer person. She's very kind, she's thoughtful, and she will do anything for anybody. So, Sarah, I love you very much, and for so many reasons. You, you understand me, you always make me smile and laugh, and you always bring the best out of me. We've already experienced so many things and I just can't wait to keep experiencing those wonderful things together. So, if we could all be upstanding. Okay. You're going to have to be balling in a minute. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well join me. To my amazing wife, to Sarah. Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we 
We'd also like to thank... <laughs> Sorry, Mark. <laughs> Am I interrupting you, mate? <laughs> <laughs> As always, Ed, as Sorry. always, <laughs> <laughs> uh, We'd also like to thank our bridesmaids, and I, I really need to get this right because there's six of them. So, uh, Katrina, Becky, Lindsay, Steph, Ooh, Tracy, and Linda. <laughs> and Katrina. I've said Katrina. Um, you all look absolutely stunning today, I'm sure everybody agrees. Uh, both me and Sarah would like to thank you for all your help and support you've given us both up to and including today. Uh, I know Sarah had a, a great time on the Hendu and she would particularly like to thank Lindsay, Tracy, <coughs> Steph and Becky for pulling all the details together and organising the whole thing. So if you'd all like to uh, raise your glasses. Well, sort of. <laughs> to the bridesmaids. Uh, if you'd like to come up, girls, as well, or ladies, I haven't uh, got them all out yet. <laughs> we've got some gifts for you. It's all right, just keep bringing them out. I'll hand them out. There's Steph. Come on, Steph. <laughs> come up first. Trina. <laughs> <Gina. laughs> uh, Lindsay. Come on, Lindsay. I'll give you a kiss, Lindsay. I'll let Sarah give him you. And Linda. <laughs> Here, Linda. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> At least it went that way. Sorted. <laughs> um, okay, now there is an unwritten rule at weddings that no one should look more handsome than the groom, and I'm really pleased to say that our ushers, Mark, Paul, and uh, Michael, have stuck to that rule. So, um, <laughs> uh, no, seriously, guys, you've all done a, a fantastic job <coughs> today. I know you've had a, a little list of jobs to do, and uh, you've all followed them. <laughs> There's only four <laughs> points on each. Uh, you've all done a superb job. Um, I'd like to just say a special thank you to, to Michael uh, for organising the Torino trip for us. Um, we had an absolutely amazing time, topped off with my favourite football team of all time, Juve, winning the league. And um, just can't thank you enough for that, mate, for organising that. So thank you very much, Michael, from, from myself. Um, so yeah, we'd like to uh, raise your glasses to my brothers-in-law, to Mark, Paul and Michael. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Uh, if you'd also like to come up, guys, we've got, got you something. Michael? Not Shaq. That's Shaq's. Leave that there for now. Here you go, mate. All right. Move that out of the bloody way, mate. Like, yeah, just watch that. I did it. There you go, mate. Cheers, Ed. Cheers, mate. Thank you, darling. Oh, cheers, Ed. Welcome, mate. Cheers, sis. I know. Don't worry, it's fine. Right, um. We'd also like to, I'm trying to find him and I can't see him. Uh, we'd also like to thank Adam uh, for doing our, our reading in church today. <clears throat> so if you'd like to uh, come up, Adam, wherever you are, he's there. I can see him now. I can see. Okay, and uh, finally. My best man, Mr. Leighton Shackleton. What a name. <laughs> or Shack, as he's known. Ah. By many. Actually, mate, I'll use your proper name for this. Gonzo. <laughs> you know, the nose, the nose thing. 
Actually, mate, I found this earlier. It's your, it's your hanky, mate. I think. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it is a bit used, actually. <laughs> Sorry, bud. I'm just, I'm just getting, I'm just getting, I'm just literally, literally getting mine in now. Jack, how long to be married? Yeah. Not very long now. <laughs> Leighton. Um, I've known Leighton for about 11 years now and he's, he's a great guy. Um, when we first met back at Supplies Team many moons ago, we, uh, we just seemed to get on straight away. We seemed to um, find the same things funny and have the same sort of personality and sense of humour. Uh, I would like to say thank you for, being, for agreeing to be my best man. <coughs> Although it was a decision I seem to have made quite some time ago, I believe, uh, when we were out in Bingley. After a few pints, I think we got a little tipsy and uh, I think the bromance was coming out and we got a little bit emotional <laughs> and uh, if I ever meet someone and get married, I'll, uh, you're my best man and uh, I think it was I love you and I love you too on it, I think, I'm not sure what it was. It was some, something along those lines, but anyway. Uh, as I've, uh, oh, I, think, I think I've skipped a page there. No, I haven't. <laughs> Uh, as I've said, I've, I've known Shaq for a good few years now and I would like to point out that he does suffer from a rare medical condition which kind of makes him prone to dipping in and out of reality when it <laughs> comes to telling stories that he believes to be true, so just sort of humour him a little bit. It's nothing's true at all. Uh, cheers for organising the Stag Doing Leeds, mate. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'm sure all the lads agree. We had a, a great time. <clears throat> Thanks for getting, uh, making all the lads get up at silly o'clock in the morning to get to the go-karting place for 9 o'clock a.m. Once you find out when we got there that you booked it for 9 p.m. But thanks, mate, anyway. <laughs> Cheers, thanks. Uh, no, jo joking, joking aside, then it, it does come the bromance bit, I'm afraid. Um, you are a great friend, Shaq. Uh, true friendship doesn't come along very often, and you've always been there for me <clears throat> when I've needed your support. Uh, to me, friendship, it means equal respect for one another, and I know that's exactly what our friendship is. So please, if you could all raise your glasses, to my best man, to Gonzo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was my next bit. Well, also, I got you a gift, mate, as well, so if you'd like to, probably best just passing it down, Chuck, to be honest. Yeah, I'll get Cheers, out. Cheers, Cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll be happy to know that that's actually it from me. So um, I'd like to make sure you all party tonight. Everyone to see everybody on the dance floor later. It's now my pleasure to hand you over to my best man, to Leighton. I feel really bad now he said all that. <laughs> Not at all. That was, my, no. that was my plan, mate, to be honest. That now, um, like I said, we've known each other years. And uh, about six months ago, he says, when we do these speeches, on the Friday night when we stay in the hotel, he says, can we just sit and go through the speeches? I don't want to know everything about it. I just want to check there's nothing untoward in there, etc. So I thought, well, if that's how he wants to do it, then that's fine. And it, I must admit, it disappointed me a little bit. Because I thought Ed would have known me a bit better than that. <laughs> so this speech that we looked through last night, Ed. <laughs> now, is anyone feeling a bit more nervous than me at this precise moment? It's probably um, Sarah's parents. <laughs> What on earth have they done, by the way, letting this guy in their <laughs> life? I just cannot believe it. Now, before I go any further, I just want to say what a fantastic service. I'm sure you'll all agree it was. And the two main people looked absolutely stunning. So if, if I can raise, a, raise your glasses to, uh, to Norman and the best man. <laughs> now, when, when Ed asked me to be the best man, I've got to be honest with you, it wasn't good news. Because <laughs> um, I thought, what do I say about Ed? He is so boring. 
it's like you've no stories on him. So I thought, well, I'm going to have to read some books. So I read these best speech books, and it says, find three points about, about the groom and try and emphasise on those. And I'm thinking, all right, I'll do that. I'm thinking, do I really have to say these things that he's no mates? <laughs> <laughs> he used to be a woman. <laughs> and he still wears knickers. So I thought, well, I'm going to have to make something up because they're the only three points that we know about, Ed. <laughs> so eventually I found something and uh, there's just a few things that I've got in here. And um, <laughs> so I'll just go through it. I mean, when, when Ed first met Sarah, like I said, at the restaurant, he rang me up. He goes, Shaq, Shaq, I found the one. This is it. This is it. I was like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> so I said to him, what's he called, Edward? <laughs> He's like, no, Shaq, this is it this time, this is it, honestly. So I was like, all right, what page of Nuts magazine is she on? <laughs> but like, he eventually said, no, this is the one, she's amazing. And uh, I think you'd all agree, Eddie's pretty much punching above his weight. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked, when we were in the church, I looked at the, the two families and it was quite emotional. I looked at Norman and his side of the family, they're all blubbering. I looked at Gino and his side of family, they're all absolutely delighted. <laughs> and I thought, poor Norman, what I just felt so sorry for Norman. So can we just can we just raise his glasses again for Norman for being a top man? That's exactly what it is. I've today. genuinely got so much stuff written down here about Ed, I didn't know what to what to say, so I've got about eight million stories. I'm open to drinks and offers, um, some are censored, some aren't, so the later on we go in the night, guys, if you just want to buy me a drink, I'm sure we can come up with some great, <laughs> great stories. Some will be true, and some will be an absolute load of tosh, <laughs> but we'll, we'll get through them, boys. Now, first, there's a few things that I want to talk about, Ed, is he's um, quite switched on, his head. You know, he's, he's calm, and um, he doesn't get flustered that much. <laughs> Now, I think the guys that were go-karting will, will agree with me on that one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now, there's a, there's a few points on there which I'm a bit disappointed about, to be honest, because I videoed Ed after his karting incident. <laughs> um, we, me black and black Ed black. were in the same team and we were winning. But Ed decided that he'd try and push it that little bit more. And on the last corner, Ed decided to spin it right into the barriers. <laughs> <laughs> and Ed being Ed got a bit frustrated and he kept pressing the pedal and we were going more and more into the barriers. He just looked an absolute idiot, to be honest with you. So he got off the track and Ed being Ed, we knew he'd be quite high rate. So we thought, some of the guys said, let's video him coming off. No, you're not, you're not, I don't want to do so it. So we did a commentary on him and I, I got a, a bottle of Coke, being professional like I am as the mic, <laughs> and we interviewed Ed. But unfortunately, I would love to play it now, but it'd just be beep, 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 beep. <laughs> So later, I promise you, I will go around as many people and show you this because it is quite hilarious. Now, just one other thing about Ed, about being calm, is when I worked with Ed years ago at Supplies Team, we were on telesales and when, when someone was out having a break, having a, a fag or a, a coffee or whatever they were doing, we used to email messages saying, oh, ring this guy up, oh, shit. Um, come back. <laughs> and Ed, Ed, to be honest, Ed was having a bad day. And we're a team of five guys, and we thrived on people having a bad day. I knew he'd bring this up. So we picked on Ed that day, and we bullied him. And he could have taken us to HR, to be honest. We just constantly bullied him that day. <laughs> and um, so I sent him a message saying, oh, can you ring this guy back? Blah, 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 phone number. He's like, yeah, yeah. So he come back to his desk and said, Ed, you've got to ring this guy immediately. He needs some sea blue paper. <laughs> He's like, I'm not interested. Said, you've got to ring him now. You've got to ring him. So Ed being Ed, stressed out, he rang the number. He rings it up and he just didn't even realise. He's on hold and it's going, opening times, press one. For directions, press two. <laughs> For visiting times, press three. And it's going on like this. He's like, Shaq, who is this? I just, just, just listen. So he pressed zero for reception. He said, are you sure this is the right call? I said, yeah, just ring it. I want sea blue paper. So he's all right. The lady picks up the phone after 10 minutes of him waiting, proper stressing out, giving it all this like he does with his hands. <laughs> 
Oh, he's doing it now, what a surprise. <laughs> and uh, he goes, um, oh yes, the lady answers, hello, yes, how can I help you? He goes, yeah, can I, can I speak to Mr. Sea Lion, please? And they went, I think someone's winding you up. He goes, why? She goes, it's Chester Zoo. <laughs> and he goes, no, no, my, my best mate has told me I need to speak to Mr. Sea Lion, he wants some sea blue paper. <laughs> no, mate, someone's having a laugh. He slammed the phone down and he stormed off and the whole floor, there was about 18, 20 people in the floor that were just cheering him and he was giving it this stomping off like he does <laughs> with his hands. Yeah, so he's, he's, not very, he's not very good under pressure. Now, Norman, it's quite amazing actually, I can't believe it, Norman touched on it within his first few sentences how tight Ed is. I don't understand it to be honest. Um, I remember once we were in Chamonix, lads being lads, we went into this uh, guy's room messing about and he had a pile of, pile of cigarettes <laughs> on the shelf and um, I don't even smoke but we were like, oh, let's just nick them, let's just nick them. <laughs> we took them all. So we're like, we took his shoes off, took his snow boots off, we're filling them up, filling all the cigarettes in his boots and everything and we, we sit outside in the decking the next day and this guy's like, um, Someone's nicked my fags. I don't, I don't understand it. Someone's nicked my fags. And we, we admitted to him, yes, actually it's us that's nicked your fags. And we're like, all right. And this guy was a bit gullible. And Ed being tight as he was, he got the fags out and he said to the guy, do you want one of your fags? <laughs> and the guy was like, oh yeah, cheers, I'll have one. And Ed, he didn't even give him the fags. He just said he can keep borrowing them to the point where the lad said, God, I keep getting the fags off you, and Ed goes, yeah, you owe me a pint for all these fags. <laughs> it's so tight, it's unbelievable. Um, yeah, and the other thing is, um, while we're on that trip, Ed being organised, I won't go into it too much, um, but Passport said, oh do you know God. much about them? Here we go. <laughs> yeah, oh, we're never going to get away with this one. Half past five, he gets to my house. Have you got everything, Ed? Shaq, stop stressing, what's wrong with you? Because I've got everything, what's wrong with you? Right, all right, fine, fine. We had to be at the airport by half past six. So we had to fly up there. We get halfway there and we're like, I was in the car and I'm driving, I'm going, I wonder which Muppet's going to forget the passport. And we're all trying to guess names, oh, it'll be him, it'll be him. And, and Ed just sort of goes, Shaq, I've forgotten the passport. <laughs> But the thing is, I went, whatever, Ed. And I just carried on driving for about another 10 minutes. He's like, no, Shaq, I have forgot my passport. I went, Ed, just shut up. <laughs> and we carried on. We got about 10 minutes to the airport. I looked in my mirror, and Ed was like a sheet. <laughs> I went, you forgot your passport, haven't you? He went, yes, I've been effing telling you for the last 20 minutes. <laughs> so we had to fly back. Bear in mind, it was probably, what, 25 minutes back to your about house? That, yeah. So we were really pushing it. We had an hour before we flew. I absolutely flew back to his house. We just pulled in left to his, to his parents' house and the blue lights came on. <laughs> I was like, this is going to be a great day for me. I'm loving this. He pulls me over, gives me a speeding ticket. Fine. Twittering on about how his gun machine works wonderfully and it's been tested this morning at four o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, I just need to get to my aeroplane. I just want to fly on my holiday. Ed's already ruined it. I've got six... <laughs> Three points, 60 quid, <laughs> fine. So we, we eventually, we got there, we absolutely flew back there. I had to leave, we had a, literally a minute before they were boarding. There was a guy waiting at the entrance to rush us through. We felt quite good actually, didn't we, yeah, flying right. through there. Yeah, well, well, good. I had to park my car right in the front entrance of Leeds Bradford Airport. <laughs> I just, just literally dumped, dumped it. it there. Had a great holiday, came back. I also had a parking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so... Ed's up. Do you think Ed would have paid me? Uh, long pocket, short arm. Yeah. So I, did, I, I did pay him. I got a speeding fine, a parking ticket, and proper stressed out because of Ed's brilliant organisation skills. <laughs> now, Ed is, we all know, he's, he's very shrewd with his money. Um, to the point where once I went to pizza up with him, and he was like, Oh, what are we getting, Shaq? I said, oh, we'll just get a pizza, Reese. Nice, original size pizza. Like, How much are they? Oh, it's about seven quid, Ed. Don't worry about it. Oh, right, right, right. Checking his pockets like this. Oh. <laughs> and then the pizza's come. 
<laughs> and have them nicely sliced up, don't they? And he goes, how much did we pay? I went, seven quid. I'm not having this shack. Call, calls the waitress over. Can you come over, please? Because yes, what's the matter? This pizza, can you slice it into eight for me, please? <laughs> She's like, yeah, all right. So she goes back, slices it. I said, Ed, what are you doing? He goes, value for money, Shaq. He says, you can't beat it. I've got eight slices to your four. <laughs> <laughs> that was close. That was banter, though. That was banter. <laughs> now, I know Ed's a massive football fan. Um, you know, so I think the only way for me, being an expert in marriage, <laughs> Lovely wife there, 18 years, I thought I'd get that in. Um, I thought I'd give him some advice in football talk. Brilliant. So, it. Uh, bring it on. Just remember, Ed, you should know that marriage is, is for life and you should be fully committed every week. <laughs> and always make sure you score every weekend. <laughs> and be sure your change ends at half times because sometimes it's good to vary it up, Ed. <laughs> But make sure you don't put your tackle in too hard. Because <laughs> you might injure yourself. <laughs> but Sarah assures me that you're not allowed to play away. <laughs> <laughs> now I just want to try one thing actually. And just bear with me a second. Just bear with me a second, two minutes. No oh, mate, what are you doing? <laughs> Can we all congratulate Gino? He's got it on silent. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be done twice. Oh, let me guess, Gino. You switched it off, but it miraculously turned on itself. <laughs> Now, it's time to get a bit serious now and, and thank a few people for making all this happen and uh, I think we've all touched on it. I think we should all say a massive thank you to both sets of parents for making this happen, so to both sets of parents. Both sets of parents. Now, I hope in time Sarah's family come to terms with the fact that Sarah's married Ed. And I think we're all here, I think you all know we're here to support you. And I think in time, Sarah will find the right man. <laughs> oh God, I will not want Sit down, Shaq. <laughs> I know I'll ever appreciate this, I'll open it for you. <laughs> it's all right, Ed, I got rid of all the lap dancing ones, don't worry. <laughs> this will mean a lot to Ed and to you guys it probably won't, to be honest, but he says to Sarah and Ed, what's his surname anyway? <laughs> Davy, I've never seen you all like, like him it. in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Best wishes, Neil Warnock. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Cheers, Thank you. Jack. Cheers. Oh yeah, I were expecting that. Ladies, no ladies and gentlemen, that brings to an end the formal part of the proceedings. It remains for me, on behalf of myself and my staff, to wish your bride and bridegroom a very long, happy and prosperous marriage. And eventually you'll be making your way out through into the Venetian drawing room where they will greet their evening guests, cut their wedding cake and get onto the dance floor for their well-rehearsed first dance. <laughs> really? Uh, uh, okay, first dance then. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Thanks you very much. Oh, sorry, Val. Yeah. Oh, it's great that. That was class. <laughs> Just destroyed me.